Hey everyone, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. I recently received a package from my crafty godmother, and inside was this Panasonic 360 Freestyle Cordless Iron. It is an NI-WL600A Blue Cordless Steam Iron, but I thought I'd go ahead and do a little unboxing today so that we can see how this iron is. I am forever tripping over the cord from my iron. So this is my pressing station where I do all of my ironing and you can see no matter whether I use my regular iron or the little palm iron, I have these cords that dangle all the way down onto the ground. I get my feet tangled up in them, they get hooked up on the drawer, they get hooked up on the side of the desk. It's just a hazard. Either I'm going to get tripped up and hurt myself, I'm going to get the cords are going to get broken on the inside or you know, the wires and stuff are going to be frayed or something. Or while I have it plugged in, if I'm over here sewing and I don't pay attention, what if the cats come over and get curious and start chewing on the wire? So I don't want to have to worry about it. So enough about that, let's go check it out and see what's inside that box. This is something my crafty godmother purchased for herself and she thought that she would use, but it just didn't work out in her craft room. So she's had it sitting, just waiting to be used, and she just never used it. So as soon as she heard me talking about it, she thought, ah, I'll send that to Robin and see how she likes it. I love trying new things. They even tell you how to repackage. So if you want to put the iron back into the box, that's pretty smart. It even has directions on how to pull it out of the box. It has vertical steam. What's interesting is it has this curved orange peel shaped sole plate. So I want to see how that works. I love a good point at the front of it to help get into corners when I'm doing my bindings and stuff like that. It has a 10 minute shut off. I've had irons that have six minutes. The last one I had right now that I'm using currently has an eight minute. So a 10 minute shut off is even better. They all say anti-drip, but I never trust them electronic temperature control and you can detach the water tank now that is a great idea because i think that's where my problem is is when i'm filling up the iron that i'm spilling it a little bit so it's getting into places in the iron where it shouldn't be so if i can detach the water tank fill it up at the faucet or with the little water bottle i keep in here then i'm not going to spill it on the iron so the iron should last longer Look at that, it has a carry case or a storage case. That's sharp. Do you read the directions? I slice through the directions. Never fails. Oh, you have a little bit. You just lift up to take that cover off. It's a nice sturdy cover. Pretty thick, as you can see there. It reminds me of Tupperware, the way you open it up like that. We have a shock absorber. Shock absorber. And a shock absorber. So there it is. Without the water, it still has a bit of heft. I like my irons to be a little bit heavier, so it's nice that it's not just a really lightweight one. It is kind of strange to be taking a hot iron and putting on basically, these are wheels and a plastic base. And that's what keeps it hot. This is not a rechargeable iron. You have to set it back on the base when you're done. You can't just like set it down because it doesn't have a position you can set it on. Because as you can see, it's pointy on both sides. It's a really nice shiny base to it. So it has your temperature. So you just go ahead and move it up to there. And on the back of the base, it tells you your steam temp. So it's got low for nylon, silk, acetate, and acrylic, medium for wool, rayon, and polyester, and high for linen and cotton. Now my other iron had a separate line to put it on for cotton and then the next one up for linen. I never really noticed that one was hotter than the other, so I don't think it matters that they're both in the same category. So you can see where it goes back into the base so that it stays nice and hot. 
To fill up the water tank, there's just a little button here. So we pop this, and this whole bit right here comes off. It has a maximum line just like any other iron, so you want to make sure you don't go over that line. There's the little fill spot. You can take it right to the faucet. I normally keep this bottle of water in here so it was easier to fill up the irons, but those were the ones that were plugged into the wall. My bathroom is two steps outside of this room, so I'll probably just use this underneath the faucet as long as your sink is deep enough. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and keep a sports bottle like I do of water in your sewing room. I've gotten into the habit of staying below the maximum line right there and I noticed here you want to pay a little bit of attention if you get too high up one side might be higher than the other so it could easily get over the maximum line so I just like to get in the habit of staying below it but then you can just adjust it to make sure that it's in the right spot you can see the little nozzle it goes all the way down to the bottom so you'll be able to use water all the way to the end Then it looks like it's really easy to put back in so you don't have to actually touch anything hot. Take it out, put it in, so that's really good. I'm a very clumsy person. My brain goes faster than my hands and feet usually, so it's really easy for me to accidentally get burnt. This does have quite a bit of weight to it. I didn't weigh it when it was empty, but when it's three quarters of the way full of water, it weighs about two and a half pounds so that is a bit so you just know if you're going to be ironing for a long time if you have any problems with your wrists or something your hands a heavy iron is not always the best i like to sew for a while and iron for a while and sew for a while and iron for a while so that works out pretty good for me this base is nice and sturdy it's got this big gripper on the bottom here, this big rubber mat, so that stays down really well. As you can see, it just a little bit of force from my hand and it doesn't move it. It has a retractable cord here in the front. Now just like my other irons that are retractable, it has a red spot that means you've gone too far. Just like some of our tape measures that when you pull it a little bit, then it go ahead and retracts. It's a little bit of a noisy one. One of the things about irons like this, now I've had a couple of irons recently and one of them, my other blue iron, when I plugged it in, it just automatically heated up. The iron I'm currently using, which is a Sunbeam and this Panasonic, it has a different feature. When you plug it in, there's a green light here that says off. You have to actually set it and get it up to the temperature that you want. Now I have a flashing red light. I'm gonna guess when it's heated up that it's gonna turn to a solid red. There's been many times when I've plugged my iron in and I've gone over to start sewing a block thinking that when the block is done, when I'm done with that couple of seams I'm doing, I can go over and the iron will be heated up, only to realize that I didn't press the little button to actually turn it on, I only plugged it in. So that's just a little habit I'm gonna have to start getting used to to make sure I press the little button and get it going. So while this is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and find a piece of wrinkly fabric so we can test it out. A little bit of warning, like many new things, when you use it the first time, it does have a little bit of an odor to it. I had a difficult time finding fabrics that needed to be pressed. Uh, most of my scraps are generally in a reasonably neat condition. They don't need a lot of pressing. The light did turn red. When I take it off of the power station, the light goes away, so you can't really tell that it's on. There's a steam button. Now with this being almost full of water, it weighs almost two pounds, which it's not really that heavy. As I'm moving it around like this, I don't have a lot of wrist fatigue. You do have to lift it up, of course. It has the little spray that comes out the front. We can adjust it on how much steam we want. works left-handed and right-handed and then when you're done you need to put it back into the base 
so that it continued to keep warm and stay heated up. My fabric is pretty hot to the touch. I did have a little bit of water come out when I first started steaming it, and I think that might have just been something when it's new. If you're not familiar with it, the many times you'll buy a brand new iron or another device that has water in it, the company generally tests it. So every iron that comes through off to the manufacturing line, they put water in it, they test it out, and then they drain the water. So that you could have some water in your reservoir and a very brand new iron that's been sealed up and everything. So if you find something like that, don't worry about it. It's not always meaning that it's been used and someone returned it. Let's see if we can test it out with a block. This has got to be one of the stranger things I've done, but not the strangest. So I have my wrinkly, crinkly old block here. I can hear the steam coming out of it. That always makes me happy. If I don't hear it, I always wonder, is it even doing any type of steam to it? If you want to see this in action, when I actually piece blocks together to see how it works on the seams, when I need to fold them over and give the block a good press, join me on my next live stream. I go live on this channel on the first and third Fridays of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern. It has vertical steam for your laundry. It does glide over the fabric real nicely. I think this would be great for pressing an entire quilt when it's finished before you go to do the layers together and start basting it and everything like that. It has a really nice smooth plate to the bottom. So your scrappy word for today is smooth. So if you've been looking for a new iron and you might've been looking at this one on Amazon or in the store somewhere, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what it is. Many times I just take my chances and once I find something, I just keep buying the same one. I love the fact that it comes with a carry case like this. Although when you're at a retreat, you can't use it up to the last minute and then pack it to take it back to your room. I'd be a little concerned about putting this on. I can touch all the way around here and it's not hot. The only thing that is hot is these little wheels here where this is setting directly on. So that's really interesting. I would still not want to put a plastic container on top of something that had a hot iron in it. So thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.